have you ever wanted to quit your job and pursue your dream? Well, if you answered yes to that question, you're going to want to meet our next guest. He left a lucrative career as a defense attorney to pursue his passion, chocolate, believe it or not. And he's helping underpri underprivileged kids along the way. It's a fascinating story. Please welcome Sean Askenazi. Oh, thank you, Dad. Thank you. How are you? So, you're a, you're a regular modern-day Willy Wonka. You know, Bill, I feel like Willy Wonka almost every day. And, and Willy Wonka was a guy, he dreamed dreams, and, and that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing at the Chocolate Factory. He was a guy that participated um, with the kids in his neighborhood. That's what we're doing. There was something magical about him, and I think there's something magical about chocolate and what we're doing. But you were, you were a defense attorney, so you went to law school, you started practicing law. How long were you into your law career before you said, hey, this isn't for me, I want to go do what I really love? I was a criminal defense lawyer for almost 19 years. Wow. I, I worked on high-profile murder cases. And, and what happened to me is about six years ago, after two first-degree murder cases back-to-back, -back, something happened. And even though I won those cases, um, I could feel in my body and in my soul that I needed to do something else. Mm -hmm. It was time to change. And so I had to find out what that was. I loved the law. I loved it for a lot of years. And I began to tell that I needed a new passion, well, and so it, that's what I did. You, you know, it, it's almost... Uh, becoming more acceptable now because back in the days when our parents were growing up you did one thing and that was what you did for the rest of your life now we're seeing people having two and, and three careers through their lifetime and i think it's very inspirational that you said hey i've got a lot you're making a ton of money you put it all on the line and you opened up the chocolate company I mean, you were getting death threats right right we my family we had to take tactical handgun training courses my daughter had to learn hostage rescue techniques uh, because i was in a very dangerous world and so eventually it, it had to change and I had to find something else. And it wasn't easy, by the way. I mean, to go literally for making a lot of money, having a, a career where I could pick the cases that I wanted to take, uh, to switch and to start something completely new. And, and you, you found an old factory and you converted that into your kind of your chocolate empire, right? Right. Uh, you could call it that, at least on the street maybe it's the chocolate empire. But the, the building was built in 1894. It's a great building. Um, it was dirt floors when we got it, and we completely renovated the whole thing and, and really made it open so that people could see the factory. They can come and they can see inside. It's open not just to the people who walk up and down the street, but especially to the neighborhood kids who, who live in the area. Well, you, you opened up, uh, which I think is also very inspirational, uh, Chocolate University, you right. call it, right? Can you elaborate on that for me a little bit? Chocolate University is, is probably where we have our best days in the factory. And it's not about chocolate making. Hmm. It's about these kids that go to Boyd Elementary School, I think they're watching right now, by the way, and these are fourth graders, they're Chocolate University students, and they get a chance for our factory to be an extension of their classroom. So they come to the factory and they learn about science and culture and math and sociology and history. Then they go back to class, and with the help of Drury University, which is across the street from them, wow. they learn all about chocolate and beyond and, and to be hands-on I think is great and it's something that they all love so they want to learn more about it and really geography because um, one thing that, that's interesting on all of your bars you mark the origin of where the chocolate bean comes from which I think is fascinating so every bar is it could be potentially different and right. you, you worked out a deal with the uh, the farmers where you share the profits with them that's right. And this is, I was there last week talking to this man on the front of the bar, Vitaliano. And Vitaliano was one of the 22 farmers that I met with in Ecuador, got back on Saturday night. And this was, I can tell you, last Wednesday was my best day in the chocolate business. And let me tell you why. It was a chance for me to give money back to these farmers wow. and to share profits with them. And they said nobody had ever come back and thanked them before, let alone brought them money. So it was an exciting day for us to give them what we call a stake in the outcome. And, and it, it was just something that I'll, I'll never forget because of the way they received it. Well, well you're, you're, you, know, you, you are an inspiration to many. And, and what advice can you give the people at home who, who are stuck in these jobs that really make them miserable and they want to go out and they want to chase their dreams? The thing you have to do, it's not about executing the dream, it's about finding the dream. So many people complain about what they're doing, but they can't find what's the next thing they're going to do. So for me, it took five years. I prayed about it for five years. Sometimes we think that prayers have to be answered you know, overnight or the next day or the next week. I needed a new passion. And so what I advise people, people who come to the factory and students and young people and older people, is do what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. but you've got to find it. And in order to find your passion, it's not, you're not going to find it in books. Right. It's not going to be in a how-to thing. 
it's usually found in serving other people. Yeah. That's the way my wife found her passion. Her passion is our well, family. Some, that's someone once told me this sincere seeker will find the truth. And I, I think you've got to search it out. It's not going to just fall in your lap and, and say, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. You've got to actually go out and, and search for it. And, and it's great because it's a family business. Your daughter works with you as well. Yes, so she does. I want to thank you, thank you for coming on. Yeah, you bet. And if you'd like to read more about Sean's incredible journey or order some of his chocolate, visit us online at inthelooped.ivillage.com. And everyone in the audience is taking home a chocolate bar. We'll be right back after this.